Hello everybody and welcome to conference 42 Kubernetes track. If you wonder if this is yet another Kubernetes talk, then the answer is maybe. Stick around then, let's find out. So today's presentation is entitled, I don't know Kubernetes and at this point I'm too afraid to ask. This title is rather extensive and today we're going to touch upon Kubernetes API, Kubernetes controller and operator pattern. Today's agenda is a rather simple and straightforward one. We're going to talk a little bit about Kubernetes history. Then I'm going to share some personal blunders and uh, aha moments. Then we're going to have a small demo concerning uh, operators. And last but not least, we're going to talk about Kubernetes importance in today's landscape. A couple of words about me. My name is Alex. I'm a site reliability engineer at Systematic. And in my spare time, I like to contribute on various platforms. You can find me under uh, that handle, Dejano Alex. Feel free to reach me if you have any questions concerning this presentation. Kubernetes has its uh, roots in two internal systems at Google, Borg, a cluster manager, and the other one, Omega. Uh, these are some snippets from the white papers which are publicly available. I highly recommend to, to read them a little bit just to understand Kubernetes. Now, the first prototype of Kubernetes was written in Java. It was actually a Borg cell running on, uh, on a local machine, later on being rewritten in Go for obvious reasons. In 2014, we have the first public commit followed by uh, one year let, later followed by uh, CNCF cloud native computing foundation in which kubernetes was donated as a C technology so here we can see google statement uh, we are pleased to contribute kubernetes to open source cluster scheduler this uh, formulation is rather interesting right it's not uh, just a plain orchestrator now, for those who don't know, CNCF Cloud Native Computing uh, Foundation is an umbrella for open source projects. Um, th this is the CNCF landscape and in here, each small square is actually a open source technology that addresses a specific need. Here we have the, the, the main pillars, application def definition and image build databases. Here we can see under scheduling and orchestration Kubernetes. And if we zoom out a little bit, if, you, if we scroll, we can see that the landscape is rather daunting. We have almost 200 technologies in, in CNCF. Now, why it is important that Kubernetes uh, was a seed technology? Moving further, after almost 10 years, our job market looks like this. Desire characteristics, Kubernetes, technical stack, Kubernetes, nice to have Kubernetes. Last but not least, what your day will look like, Kubernetes. So these are snippets from actual job descriptions. And fortunately or unfortunately, Kubernetes is a prevalent technology. So more or less evolved under uh, around Kubernetes, right? Being a C technology in, in, uh, in uh, CNCF. Our um, entry point in today's discussion is Kubernetes lingo, right? So let me share with you a, a funny story. So in the beginning, uh, involved in, in, in various meetings, one of which someone said, we need a solution that supports automatic resource bin packaging for our workloads. And I was, okay, so we're not talking about Kubernetes because Kubernetes is uh, a container orchestration system, right? But actually, this is the technical definition. So coming back to, to, to the Borg white paper and and uh, Omega, right? The, the scheduling part, the, the automatic resource beam packaging. This is a very important feature of Kubernetes. And of course, we have various uh, terms, right? Like naked, naked pods, pods which uh, don't run under a controller we have things like workload so you might say my pod has been scheduled or you can say the workload has been scheduled we have various 
container design patterns like init containers sidecar containers ambassador pattern right for for containers and also for those uh, interested in in kubernetes administration we have things like st static pods now almost every presentation concerning kubernetes starts with this high level view uh, of Kubernetes architecture in which we have the control plane with API server, scheduler, control manager, etcd, and the data plane with, with uh, workers, right? Now, one might say, okay, so this is the, the special thing concerning Kubernetes. But if we were to take a look at another technology, we can see that it also has a control plane with managers. It all has a state store, a raft based state store like etcd. And last but not least, it has a data plane with workers. So for sure, we can see some similarities, right? Then this begs the question, what's the special thing about Kubernetes? Even though we work with YAMLs on a daily basis, behind the scenes, Kubernetes has a nice HTTP based API server. So behind the scenes, there are actually JSONs and some some protocol buffers, right, for for internal calls. And this API server, which is the core of Kubernetes architecture, implements the controller pattern, right? What do we mean by controller pattern? It's a simple watch loop that watches the desired state, meaning the one that we have in our YAMLs, and uh, the current state which is the actual state of the, let's say, objects that we have running in our cluster and tries to do the, uh, the reconciliation, right? The famous reconciliation loop. It's actually the, the controller pattern which tries to, to adjust the current state in order to match the desired state. Now, the controller mainly does three things. It observes the desired state, it analyzes and last but not least, it corrects the drift of, of our current state, right? So the controller, it's as I said, it's a basically it's a, a watch loop, a generic watch loop, so to say. Operators, the next step. Operators are a design pattern for extending Kubernetes API and creating software to run on Kubernetes. This is a rather steep definition. Now, basically, an operator is just a custom controller right a custom watch loop and most times operators need some some custom resources here on the right side we have some custom resource definitions so if you do kubectl get crds you're gonna see custom resources that you 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 are having in your cluster things like uh, harbor or jaeger or key clock configure uh, custom resources right now, we're going to try to to have a demo concerning uh, operator. Now, the the entire premise of our setup is as following. So, as we said, the operator is a custom controller. Uh, we're going to have an operator running. Uh, we're going to deploy an operator in our cluster. The operator is being configured by a custom resource. So we're going to have a custom resource definition and actually a custom resource is a way of extending Kubernetes API. And the entire purpose of this operator is to aggregate logs from various pods. So let's see it in action. Starting with some, some small prerequisites, right? Now in Kubernetes, we have the documentation at our fingertips. So if we do a kubectl explain pod, for example, we can see exactly uh, how the controller works, so to say, right? So we have some nested fields, the spec, which is the desired state and the status, the most recently observed status of the pod, right? If we drill down a little bit and take a look at the status, we can see the all known phases like fail, pending, running, succeeded, and unknown. So these are our pods. Um, uh, specs and status, right? The, the the fields that the controller uses. Now, you might have heard that Kubernetes is a compute abstraction. And why is that? For example, on my local machine, if I would like to have a sorted 
view about uh, my process processes resource consumption i can do a top i will select cpu as a key for my sorting and here we have a sorted view concerning our resource resource consumptions for for our process but guess what we can do the same thing in kubernetes so we if we do a kubectl top pods let's take a look at the containers let's sort by cpu and let's take a look in all namespaces so here we have a sorted view for our pods guess what we can do the same thing for our uh, nodes so we can do kubectl top nodes here i have the simple kubernetes cluster provided by by my setup by by the docker desktop solution the interesting part is if we increase the verbosity a little bit we can see that behind the scenes an api is being called more exactly the nodes api and we have a response body so the the json that we we talked in the beginning now we can do the same request uh, having the endpoint, right? So we can do a raw request to this endpoint and let's pipe it to JQ. And guess what? We're guess what? We're gonna have a, a response, right? So if we do kubectl top pod, top not sorry. Uh, we're gonna see that we have the the same response of course uh, previously we had it in nano cores and here we have milli cores nonetheless we can talk with the with the api so we can see that behind the scenes it's a nice api now if we take a look at api resources let me zoom out a little bit we can see that we have our let's say vanilla objects like pods secret services deployments right uh, here we have the the api version the api groups and here are the names for our kinds the kind it's so to say object in kubernetes more exactly is an api resource endpoint now if we grab for metrics we can see that actually this is the api that will api endpoint that we use when we did kubectl top pods or top nodes right so if we take a look at this api group we can see that we have two objects behind metrics api group this is the 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 version right and here we have the the kind meaning the objects now we have an idea that behind the scenes there there's a there's an API. We, we basically talk with the API to get various informations. Now the interesting part is that we can extend this API. So for example, if we would like to extend the API with so to say KCD API endpoint, we just verified we don't have it. We need something, and that something is a custom resource. So if we take a look at our custom resource there are a couple of important things in here meaning the api group so we said that we need or we want the kcd api group behind this api group we have a single object uh, of kind log drain right and last but not least another important thing is that this object has only one spec meaning the target uh, spec which is of type string so now if we were to apply this custom resource definition we can see that now we have our new api group uh, of version v1 alpha and behind this api group we have this api resource kind log drain and the nice thing is we can explain it so if we do ex explain ld the the short name logger drain we can see that is a resource that allows the configuration of a dim operator so it needs an operator right uh, but before creating the operator let's take a look at the specs so if we're looking at the specs we can see that it has only one field as we we know the target field 
and uh, it's a specification for managing log ag aggregation to the demo operator drain and the target it's used to set the desired label view for the operator to pick up so now this begs the question what's an operator we said it's a custom controller a custom watch loop but actually it's just a simple application a simple, a simple uh, binary we can take a look I have the small script package as a uh, we can I actually let's build it up so we need to build our image let's use the same tag and manifest Whoop. and basically we packaged our application as a docker image and now we need to deploy it but keep in mind our application needs to talk with kubernetes api therefore it needs some rbac rules so we need to create a service role and some cluster role bindings for our application of course in order to deploy our application we're gonna need to apply the deployment so we have a deployment and if we take a look at the pods which are running in the default namespace we can see that we have our operator which is the uh, our application running in a pod so if we do a kubectl logs and follow the demo operator we can see that our operator looks for logger drain objects now let's create our logger drain object let me split the screen in here now of course keep, keep in mind in, on the left side we have the the operator our custom loop which is running and it's looking for logger drain objects so we created our custom resource definition but we don't have any logger drain object so if we do a kubectl get logger drain there's nothing um, now let's create an object so let's create our logger drain object uh, it's of kind log drain let's call it demo ld and here let's set the target as being kcd and now as soon as we create our logger drain object so we're going to kubectl apply it we can see that our pod has already seen the logger drain object right so logger drain object named demo ld with specs target kcd so that's nice now we have a, a logger drain object which tells to our operator pick up the logs for all pods that have the label kcd but we don't have any pods label kcd with the label kcd therefore we need to to create i'm going to use a simple nginx image and i'll create a naked pod and as soon as my nginx pod named pod one will be healthy and, and ready we can see that our operator picked up its log so it found pod one in default namespaces and here we can see the logs of the nginx based pod we can make another naked pod remember the the scope of the operator was to drain the logs for all pods with the label target kcd so here it's a simple uh, flask based application and the the story remains the same as soon as the pod is healthy we can see that uh, the logs have been picked up for pod 2 as well and here we can see the the pods right now coming back to our presentation what we've seen we've seen that a resource in kubernetes is, is uh, actually an endpoint right it's a endpoint in kubernetes api operators are custom controllers which allows us to have opinionated resources on top of kubernetes meaning that we have a way of extended kubernetes api now this enables us to build various things 
on top of Kubernetes, right? Uh, and here we, we, we've seen the entire adoption of platform engineering, right? It's rather easy to extend Kubernetes API, but this doesn't mean that you really need to do it. I mean, you can have something that uh, it works, but it lacks uh, a proper developer experience or a proper use case, right? So keep in mind, if you want to extend Kubernetes API, it is rather easy using custom resources and, and custom controllers. Think twice before doing it, right? In many ways, everything is an abstraction, right? So we're working with uh, abstraction on a daily basis, right? So when you create a custom resource and an operator, you create an abstraction that can be used in, in Kubernetes. As we've seen, Kubernetes is a platform for building platforms, right? It's easy to extend its API and it has almost of a plug and play, appro uh, plug and play approach with, with regards to the API. And last but not least, a very important thing Kubernetes is only as good as the infrastructure it runs on top of, right? So keep in mind, uh, having multiple small uh, nodes versus a few larger nodes, this is a ongoing debate and Kubernetes will not do any magic if the infrastructure uh, under provision. That was it. Thank you very much. Uh, don't forget, if you have any questions with regards to this presentation, this is my handle. Have a nice one. Goodbye. Thank you.